Welcome back to another video. Had a few things I wanted to address in this video, so let's get right into it. If you enjoyed, do me a favor and tap that like button, smash the subscribe, and hit the notification if you want to stay up to date with all of my content. We had a question asked to Clarion, one of the developers, if the hat drops anything. That is in reference to the boss in the newest area, the hat area the hatched area and clarion said no there are no drops from that boss however he was thinking of putting a travel form and pet of the hat on the boss might add it later but he doesn't know now in regards to the class changes the pirate and the ninja one person was making mention being able to revert ninja back to its original and clarion said it is working as intended the recent changes to make the Ninja AoE has some people upset because they feel that it is not a good change. As for the pirate, some people also feel that has been nerfed in a way because of the directional cone when doing the AoE. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Another player mentioned how people can just chase and win in PvP now, and Clarion stated that they are balancing the game for PvE, not PvP. Way back when PvP first came out, there was balancing issues, and a lot of our classes actually got ruined because of the balancing of PvP. Now, this is kind of a reversal of that. We are starting to get back the original classes we had prior to the PvP balancing, but this in turn is hurting the PvP community now. So it's really, it's, it's a very, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Now Clarion did say the game's biggest audience is PvE. This is true. He said we're not balancing the game around PvP. One player says PvP ruins PvE, and another player said how does PvP ruin PvE because classes have been gutted and made boring. PvP ruined PvE because PvP came out, suddenly all classes had to be adjusted to make PvP more fun, which was true. That was the problem, and because of the fear of stuff being too strong in PvP, there had to be a balance to make the classes work with themselves to have a counter and whatnot. It makes sense. It's just unfortunate there wasn't standalone classes specifically for PvP compared to our PvE classes. Clarion was asked, what still annoys me is that PvP gets more abilities in PvE, and Clarion said, I want to bring those to PvE, at least some of them. I think it'd be really fun to open up a secondary bar and let you add a second cross skill and some of the PvP abilities to your bar, and I agree. For a long time now, I've said, why don't they use the custom, they, they have goblin fuel now this is essentially the dash the pvp dash but this is a consumable that you can use anywhere in the world and you could put this into your little item slot and use this like a skill having more items like this that were reusable with a cooldown you could have multiple skills that could be items now, speaking of PvP, there is a reason why they don't do multiple queues, like having a scaled PvP and an unscaled PvP, and that is because there's not enough PvP players to split the player base. Now, Clarion said something here. Samurai needs a nerf, but a buff to its dash thing. Now, the dash thing was actually nerfed when it first came out due to PvP, but I definitely do not want to see Samurai get a nerf now. I like Samurai the way it is. If it got a nerf, it would just be another class I would put in the bank and never use again. And Clarion said, we talked about this. I'd rather buff up the other classes to be on par with Samurai, and I think that is a better direction to go. It's better to buff than to nerf. He also said it's taking time, but we are getting there with buffing each class. And you guys will be pleased to know that Necro is on the list. And that is one that a lot of people, and I've seen comments in my videos, and I've seen people talking about Necro needing a buff. It definitely needs a buff. I haven't really played Necro much at all, and I used to love Necro when it first came out, but it's so weak compared to everything else. 
Over the last eight years, I have never seen a dev talk about face cosmetics before, so I wanted to address this particular thing where Clarion said, I think a face cosmetic slot would be cool, but I don't know how it would be how it would interact with the current system. It's the only problem with the way that head items are built because there is a single head item. That's how it works. So if you would have to have an additional head item in order for that to work. Now also keep in mind every piece of armor that we have on from our shoulders, our belts, our boots, our heads, all that has to be loaded onto the device. So if you have somebody standing in front of you with all that armor on, it has to load that onto their device. So if you give them another slot with another visual item to load, that is yet another item that the devices have to load. So there's going to be more draw calls on devices. Not sure if that's something they would want to do. Have you guys been looking forward to the Sky Pirate Saga? Well, you can stop looking forward to it because we are not getting the Sky Pirate Saga. It's changed. This is the newest information. Is it Sky Pirate that was promised or something new? And Clarion said, something new. Why ignoring the Sky Pirate Saga? Is it better concept? Flying City. Because the new story has to do with the void and will move the main story forward, which personally to me sounds better. Also, it might be way better personally, but you can use the Sky Pirate as part of the void saga, can't you? It's complicated. Want to repurpose what's there and reboot it. It's mostly just one map right now. And the map isn't finished, but the story's finished. It's written. Just need time to build map models. Nope, unfinished map with half of an NPCs as far as I know. If there's a story written, it's not been given or shown to me. And when I asked about it, no one else seemed to know what the story was other than the basic concept for the location. Map and ideas beyond the zone, behind the zone are super, super cool though. Would love to rework it into something playable. We went through a transitional period where the team got changed up and had to get approvals for some things, but I think we're going to hit our stride with the start of the new saga, aiming for October. Are you guys interested in the war? Let's get some information here. The war thing is fun. I liked having a target the whole community has to reach, like the Cove. So... This is Clarion speaking. The plan is to iterate on what we did with the Cove. We're going to pick a faction. Pirate! and to be sent to an island where the war is happening and to fight for that side. But unlike the cove where only quest turn-ins would pump out the war meter, we upgraded the system. So killing enemies, gathering resources, etc. can fill up your war meter. One thing I want to change about how we've handled features like this is really build on them and like make them better as we learn from releases. A big problem with the cove was the fact you'd have to go accept a quest, kill a bunch of monsters, come back, re Except the quest aiming to make this a bit smoother. Different actions will impact the meter in different ways. If a task requires a lot of effort, it's going to fill the meter up a lot more than killing five normal monsters. I'm pretty excited. Just a heads up, you will be locked into the faction you pick. Question, once you pick a team, can you swap? No. Will each team have different rewards like a set? Yes. He also said that the unlocks will happen as the bar fills, so very similar to the cove where we would unlock certain items at certain percentages that will also be happening. In a story way, it'll be previewed. We'll meet the leaders of each faction and their armor set is the war reward along with some other goodies. When a player asked Clarion about the Doom weapons, he responded with the new Doom weapons will be related to the end of the war. So we are going to be getting the Doom weapons as promised, and they're going to be arriving at the end of the war. Also said that the axe is not going to be upgraded yet. He's referring to the Doom axe that we have. And if you're curious if these weapons are going to be more powerful than the weapons we currently have, he says they're designed to be on par with other epic spellforged weapons. The point is to have choice. We got a sneak peek of the map that the war is going to be on. This is a sneak peek of, or at least one of the maps. I don't know if there's multiple maps, but it looks nice. I like it. And also assets from the war are going to be housing items. 
As usual, there will be a Talk Like a Pirate Day collection, but there's also going to be war rewards that will be separate. So Claren also said, hoping to get the class production going once the spell editor is made. So that's one of the tools that he's wanting to get made. The spell editor is kind of the behind a few things in priority right now, as much as I wish it wasn't. So it's not the priority thing. There's a few others that are taking priority first, but then the spell editor will be coming, which will then be helping to make class production. Here's a sneak peek image of the meters. So you've got the Blackthorn Fleet, which is, I'm assuming, the pirate, and then the Medora Cage, which is the ninja, I'm assuming. Clarion also said, I want to change the structure of how our releases are once the saga starts, that the filler releases take place within the region of the saga and expand on its setting and characters rather than just being random adventures. When asked if there was going to be a new level cap, he said no. Happy with where the level cap is right now. Additional power will be gained via gearing. Once we feel like we can't offer new exciting gear, we will raise the cap. Which is also why there hasn't been any legendaries since raising the cap. Now in case it wasn't mentioned earlier what the Doom weapons were, we found out that they are the Doom Guns and Doom Katana. Now those will not be available until the war meter reaches 100. At which point, the pirates, when they reach level 100, will be able to take on the boss to obtain the Doom Guns, and the same goes for the Ninja. So you take on the Ninja to try to take get the Katana. Now here's something interesting. Do you have a contingency plan if one of the sides doesn't reach 100%? Clarion said, oh, well then I guess they'll never get it in reference to the Doom Weapon because you need to get to 100% to unlock the Doom Weapon. Not sure if that's going to be reviewed or not. We'll have to wait and see. So there we go. We've got some information regarding the war and the Doom Weapons and the classes. Quite a plethora of info. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you made it this far into the video, post a secret word fudge into the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.